Thanks for the help. But who are you people? My name is Sir Junda, and this is my captain, Grease Dritus. How you doing? Yeah, the man is my ship, but you better pay attention to this lady here. So, who are you? Cal, Kestis. Who was that back there? An Imperial Inquisitor. She's a Force user hunting Jedi survivors. And now that she knows who you are, she will not stop until she destroys you. How do you know so much? And why'd you help me? We track Imperial communications. We heard the Inquisitors were heading to Bracca. So we made our move. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order was, first and foremost, the story of Cal Kestis, and though its upcoming sequel will obviously still continue to focus on the former Padawan in hiding turned Jedi Knight and his buddy droid BD-1, his companions and the crew of the Stinger Mantis will once again play a crucial role in the story as well. One character in particular that is arguably as crucial to the story that Respawn Entertainment is telling is Sir Junda, Cal's mentor and it goes without saying that she is once again going to continue to grab a fair bit of the spotlight. Ahead of Star Wars Jedi Survivor's imminent launch, here we're going to zoom in on her and her story and go through all of it to prepare for what lies ahead for her. When Order 66 was executed by Sheev Palpatine and his army of clone troopers, the Jedi Order was decimated and the vast majority of Jedi Knights throughout the galaxy were killed. Many, however, managed to survive and went into hiding. Sir Junda was one of them. Back when she was a young Padawan training to become a Jedi Knight during the reign of the Galactic Republic, Sir trained as an apprentice under Jedi Master Eno Cordova, who, of course, is another character who has an important role to play in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order's story, even though he's long dead by that time. There's obviously a great deal we don't know about Sir from that period of her life, though a fair bit of it is covered in the comic book series Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Dark Temple which also includes appearances from a couple of very well-known Star Wars characters, including the likes of Master Yoda and Master Mace Windu. We'll skip over all of that, though, and jump straight into the most important bits of Seer's backstory, which take us directly to Order 66, everything that happened to her at that time, and the immediate aftermath of those traumatic events. By the time the fall of the Galactic Republic came about, Seer had long since graduated from her role as an apprentice and became a Jedi Knight herself, and even had a Padawan of her own in a young girl named Trilla Siduri. At the time when Order 66 was executed, Seer, Trilla, and several Jedi younglings that were in the company were ambushed by Palpatine's clone troopers. While they were fortunate enough to escape the ambush, they instantly followed this up by going into hiding. For a while, they were able to keep out of the Empire's clutches, but eventually their luck ran out. With the Empire right on their tail, Seer, in an attempt to lure them away from Trilla and the younglings, tried to lure the Empire away from them, and though the children and her Padawan were able to escape, Seer herself was captured and was held captive in Fortress Inquisitorius, the base of operations of the Inquisitors, an order of four sensitive agents of the Dark Side who served the Empire by hunting down Jedi. In the Fortress, Seer was questioned and tortured to death by Inquisitors and even Sith Lord Darth Vader himself, and though she held firm for quite some time and refused to give up the location of the younglings and Trilla, she could not resist much longer. Eventually, she broke and ended up giving away their location, which, as you might imagine, ended poorly for them. The Empire quickly tracked the children down and took Trilla captive, taking her to the fortress as well, where she too was tortured. That ordeal, the torture, and knowledge of Seer's betrayal sparked something in Trilla, and she eventually gave in to the dark side, joining the Inquisitors and going on to become known as the Second Sister. Following that, Trilla, as the Second Sister, was brought to the room where Seer was being held to mock her for her failures, and as soon as Seer realized what happened to her former Padawan, she, well, she lost it. Instinctively, she tapped into the dark side of the Force and killed everyone in the room, barring Trilla and herself who she couldn't harm for obvious reasons. She fled from the room and using the dark side killed anyone else that fell in her path as she made her escape. Once she was away and out of harm's way though, something changed in Seer. Knowing that she had failed Trilla and led her down the path of darkness, and knowing that she herself had tapped into the dark side, she decided to cut herself off from the force. In the years that followed, Seer remained in hiding and stayed as far away from using the force as she could and eventually fell in with Grace Dritus, the pilot and owner of the ship Stinger Mantis, who she strongly believed wouldn't betray him, and who had no qualms with breaking the law laid down by the Empire every now and again himself. Seer joined Grease's crew aboard the Mantis, thus making the beginning of a long and steady friendship. 
Here, we jump to the events of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order itself which sees Seer and Grease traveling to the planet of Bracca after learning about the presence of a former Padawan in hiding on the planet, and that Trilla is there as well to hunt him down. Of course, the former Padawan turns out to be none other than the game's protagonist, Cal Kestis, who is on the verge of being killed by Trilla, aka the second sister, but manages to make a narrow escape when the Mantis arrives on the scene in the nick of time to take him off the planet and out of the Inquisitor's clutches. From there, they head to the planet of Bagano, where Sierra tells Cal she needs him to enter an ancient Zepho vault, where she believes something of great value was hidden by her former, now dead master, Eno Cordova. With the help of his buddy droid BD-1, Cal is able to discover that the thing Master Cordova hid inside the vault was a Jedi holocron that contains a list of the names of four sensitive children throughout the galaxy. Seer realizes that with this list, she can rebuild the Jedi Order and fight back against the Empire, which means she has to travel the galaxy to get access to the knowledge that will help her unlock the vault to get to the Holocron. Understanding how important the mission is, Cal agrees to join her cause, with Seer officially taking him under her wing as his Padawan. Their journey throughout the game, as you might imagine, is one of many ups and downs, a lot of which obviously revolves around Seer's past. At one point, during a confrontation with the second sister, she reveals her identity as Trilla to Cal and tells him about Seer's betrayal, following which Seer herself tells him about why it is that she chose to cut herself off from the Force. That, as you might imagine, leads to some tension between the pair, though eventually they're able to overcome it to form an even stronger bond. More on that in a bit. After an eventful journey that takes them all across the galaxy, as Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order approaches its conclusion, the crew of the Mantis is successful in getting access to the vault on Bagano, where upon retrieving the holocron at long last, Cal has a vision of him and Seer rebuilding the Jedi Order with the help of the four sensitive children, only for all of them to be defeated, killed, and tortured by the Empire, with Cal himself joining the enemy. As soon as the vision ends, things get even worse. They're ambushed by Trilla, who steals the holocron, and leaves. This proves to be a turning point for both Seer and Cal. Seer realizes that she can no longer go on living as she had done ever since she was captured all those years ago, and reconnecting with the Force fully resumes her role as a Jedi, and also knights Cal, finally completing his studies and seeing him go from Padawan to a full-on Jedi Knight. Together, they head to the Fortress Inquisitorius and confront Trilla, where Cal is able to defeat her in combat. Rather than killing her though, Seer is able to finally bring her back to the light, but promptly after the two mend with their broken relationship, things quickly go wrong again. None other than Darth Vader himself arrives on the scene. He kills Trilla on the spot and takes Seer and Cal on in battle. Obviously, they're unable to match his immense strength, but though they cannot defeat him, they do manage to escape with the Holocron in their possession. Aboard the Mantis, however, they make a significant decision about what to do next, knowing full well that trying to rebuild the Jedi Order with the Holocron's list of four sensitive children would only put their lives in danger. Cal destroys it with his lightsaber, and that's where the game ends where the story goes in Star Wars Jedi Survivor remains to be seen, but there's little doubt in our mind that Seer and Cal's tale still has plenty of twists and turns ahead, and we can't wait to find out what they are. Hey, did you know that we at Gaming Bolt upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.